Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lokes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we will be looking at chapter three, which is volumetric properties of pure fluids. And in particular, we are looking at generalized correlations for gases. Now this is all based on the theory of corresponding states, which says that all fluids, when compared at the same reduced temperature and reduced pressure, now remember that reduced temperature is the temperature divided by the critical temperature. Reduced pressure is the pressure divided by the critical pressure. So if you compare them at the same reduced temperature and reduced pressure, they will have approximately the same compressibility factor, and they will all deviate from the ideal gas behavior to about the same degree. Now there is an improvement to this that all fluids having the same value of a centric factor, we'll get back to this in a moment, when compared at the same reduced temperature and reduced pressure, have about the same compressibility factor and all deviate from the ideal gas behavior to about the same degree. So we've now introduced something new, the acentric factor. This acentric factor is defined um, actually, it was in a slide, a few slides uh, back in class. When we were talking about cubic equations of state, we it was in there. But omega, or the eccentric factor, is negative 1 minus the log base 10 of the vapor pressure when the reduced temperature is 0 0.7 divided by the critical pressure. So it's like a reduced vapor pressure when TR is 0 0.7. And generally, uh, what this is doing is talking about whether or not your molecule is very spherical or maybe oblong, something like that, some other shape. And if you use the reduced temperature and pressure plus the eccentric factor, what we see is that almost all substances behave very, very much alike. So here, for instance, is methane. And just looking at the supercritical fluid portion of methane, if we graph Z, the compressibility factor, as a function of P, the pressure, for a variety of temperatures, you see that we get these various graphs here. And some of them just die out because they go into the saturated region. And some go up slowly, and some go down for a while and veer up sharply. But if we compare this to what the generalized equation says, it predicts that the graph will look something like this over here. And in fact, as we go through and look at these for various values, we see that we get some that just kind of drift up slowly and some dip up and down and some do this very very sharply and some come and they just kind of drop off because they've now moved into saturated liquid and vapors and all the dashed lines are for these saturated substances now this technique and this similarity is really pretty good as long as I'm talking about gases. It loses a lot um, uh, when you get to talking about liquids. Now, to read a graph like this, you can certainly do this. You're gonna find your pressure here. It's a logarithmic scale. So, for instance, this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2 is here, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, all the way up 0 0.9 to 1. And then you move to a new decade. So this next number, instead of being 1.1, this is 2, 3, 4. And I'd get up to 10, and then I'd count 20, 30, 40, etc. And I can read from this the compressibility factor for a simple round molecule. Now I can improve upon this several different ways, but one is that I can tabulate this information instead of having to read from a graph. It's very hard to read from a graph and get a very precise answer. So we have in our book these Lee-Kessler tables, which are summaries of our answers. 
And what this says is that I have the zero term, which is the first part of the law of corresponding states. And then I have a correction based on eccentricity. So I'm going to find a number from the Z0 table, another number from the Z1 table, multiply this one by omega, and add it to this one. And that will give me an estimate of Z. And it will be very good as long as I'm talking about gases. Now, in order to do this, you're going to have to find your value of TR across this way and your PR across this way. We will need to interpolate periodically when reading these numbers. And interpolation basically says, if I were to plot these two points, so if I knew that Z varied with, say, two temperatures, TR, and I knew the value of Z at each one of these here, these would be numbers I read from the table. But what I wanted to know was what is Z when I met this value of T here. Interpolation, linear interpolation says, okay, let's connect these with a straight line. And I expect that the correct value for Z is going to be on the same straight line. So therefore, if I consider this point to here to be Z to TR2, and this point here to be Z1, TR1, and I wanted to know what Z is at T, or TR, then I could say that the slopes, so Z2 minus Z1 over TR2 minus TR1, would be the same if I went from the two points given from the table, or if I went from this unknown. So this slope is the same as this slope. And if I use this, then I will know everything because most of this comes from the table. This is my temperature I'm looking for the Z value at. And this I can solve for. And doing this is going to be linear interpolation. Now the bad news is most of the time I end up needing to do, uh, it's called double interpolation. But if I have a number that's in between two points here and it's in between two points here, I have to interpolate on one variable in both, for both pressures and then interpolate, say, for the pressure. One last thing is that those very small molecules do require some corrections. Um, generally, I would just simply say that whenever you need these, look them up. There's various corrections that are made, but hydrogen, helium, and neon, because of their very small molecules, uh, we end up needing to make corrections. And the one they give in the textbook is for hydrogen, but there are others available. Uh, this concludes this lesson. We're going to come back and look at an example and we will look at some other ways that I can use this um, for virial equations in our uh, following class. Thank you very much for your time.